Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> Hello, TDF fans. Hey, TDF fans. How are you? <laughs> I'm Reed Bernie. Uh, I'm you from Bernie. Um, we're at uh, we're the cast of Chester Bailey at the Irish Repertory Theater, which starts performances on October 12th. Um, those are previews, and then we open on October 19th. Right. And uh, here, and here we go. Um, just in case you wanted to know uh, what we look like over here, if you can't see it, right now we look like your hotel staff because we're both dressed in these Somehow other, our stylist didn't show up today, <laughs> and uh, we're both in the same color. Um, I'm in a sort of slightly yellow. Very you got like a, a yellow stripe. stripe. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really show up on the screen, though. Uh, I'm a, a white guy. I'm 68 years old. Um, I wish I could say I had a full head of hair, but I don't. Uh, I have gray hair about halfway back. So, I think it looks great. Yeah, well, that's it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> I am I am the younger one. Uh, I'm 26 years old. I'm also wearing a white shirt. I've got a little blue. Here it is. A little blue flower a here little, for you. A little lotus. A little something. lotus or something or other. Yeah. Um, I've got brown curly hair right now. I took a shower beforehand, so I would look nice. We've got, um, we're in our, our kind of living room area. We've got uh, blue curtains behind us. It looks like we're about to do a puppet show. <laughs> it's a bunch of beauty. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that's everything, right? Let's I get think to that's it, huh? It. Okay. So this is our third time uh, co starring together in Joseph Doherty's Chester Bailey. Um, why do we keep returning to this play? Do you have a do you, you have start. a reason why you keep doing it? You start. Um, well, the first couple of times I was, I think both. I, I might speak for you too here, but I think both of us were excited to work together. Um, but now the the novelty of that has grown old, don't you? Think? Huh. <laughs> no, we. I keep coming back to it um, because it is indeed some of the most beautiful writing you can even it's like you know, what joe has done is like poetry on that stage it, yeah. it really is it's a, it's a stunning play we first did it in the summer of 2019 at the contemporary american theater festival in shepherd sound west virginia which you may know about it's sort of like a williamstown down south mm -hmm. they do new plays and uh only new plays actually and they gather a, a great group of uh playwrights and and um Actors and, uh, producers, directors, directors, and directors, you know, designers. It's a beautiful part of the country, and we went down there to do it. Um, I had first gotten involved with the play in 2015. I was going to do a reading of it at the Irish Rep. Uh, Ephraim wasn't old enough to play the part yet. And um, uh, I got a television job at the last moment, and I couldn't do it. So uh, the first time it came to us in 2019, Ephraim got the part. I auditioned for it, um, and I had to go through, because the way they do it, Ed Herendine, who's no longer the artistic director over there, but he kind of oversees all the auditions. Um, I went into Pat McCorkle's office and auditioned with them, and uh, several rounds later, they, they offered me the part, and then you knew Ron, like Marcino. Our director, and yeah. I had done Hay Fever with Joanne Woodward in 1982, and um, so I'd known him all along, but he cast Ephraim, and then after he cast Ephraim, he came to me and he said, would you be interested in playing the doctor? Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, if I say no to this, I'll regret it the rest of my life. So I said yes. And we went down and the play was. You've regretted it ever since. I've regretted it ever times. since. And no, uh, it, w it was it was a beautiful production and very bare bones. Um, we had a great time. And we got uh, Tom Vertel, the New York producer, through a series of great uh, happenstances, made it down to see us, and he has has um, uh, signed on to help us bring the play to New York. And uh, so then we were going to do it again at Barrington Stage in the summer in 2020. of 2020. And then, then, of course, the world ended. <laughs> but we ended up doing it in the... We did it, yeah. We went back um, last summer in 2021. Um, and we, we did it there for well, how long we were there for about, it was um, about a month and yeah, we extended and, and it was bizarre with, yeah. because the audience, every single audience person was six feet away from the other. It was the first in theater show that they did. Over That's there. right. And they took out every other row. And yeah. so it was a, a bizarre, um, 
thing, Meryl Streep came to the play. I know, which was horrifying. Well, it wasn't horrifying, it was <laughs> thrilling, but she said afterwards Very scary us, for me. She said, I worried at the beginning because there, were, there was so yeah. much space how we would come together as an audience. And um, she said within five minutes, it, we all were. On I know board. she was. She was very sweet. It afterwards. was great. So um, I think we come back to the play. Long answer to a short question, uh, because it's such a beautiful play, mm -hmm. and I feel very strongly about wanting New York to discover Ephraim ah. and uh, and help him launch his New York career. And um, so we all have a lot riding on it. <laughs> I'd say so. How have your performances evolved since the first time you did this play in 2019? I've learned my lines at this <laughs> point. <laughs> yes. No, uh, I, I feel like this is the best production of all three, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Joe has done some beautiful uh, work on the play, some new rewriting, which is stunning. And um, the production is a much more sophisticated production technically. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, well, this time around we have, we, not to kind of, there's a lot of surprises awaiting for you when you see the show, but we have kind of um, uh, this great set from John Lee Beatty, and we have this, mm -hmm. you know, this, this the Irish Reps um, Theater has a turntable that we can move around on and roll around on, which is very, very cool. Which we never had um, before. But our performances, well, performance wise, I don't know, I think we've remained, Pretty consistent. I with feel these better characters. personally yeah. than I have. I feel much more sort of in it and grounded than I have in the first two. But yeah, I don't know. I think there's a lot. There's a lot to say with this character. Um, we play. We're not father. We're father and son. And really, if you haven't already guessed, um, but <laughs> but in the play, we're um, we're not. I play Chester Bailey, the guy that the name the play's named after, and. He, uh, you play my my doctor, Doctor Cotton, right? Um, and so as you go through, kind of, you've had time to learn and 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 live with these characters for a bit, which is something that a lot not a lot of performers really get to yeah, experience. Yeah, it's remarkable that uh, um, I don't think in my long career I've ever had a play that I've worked on over, over this amount over. of time. Yeah, over and over again. Yeah, um, there's you kind of. You just, as you grow as a person, you suddenly dis discover certain things that resonate with you, this character in different ways each time. Yeah. It's very cool. As we as we grow, we just get better as actors and, and I hope as people. And, uh, and I hope that that shows up on stage. We should probably do a little synopsis of the play for people. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I imagine at this point, you're, you're now eight minutes in and you don't know what the play's about. Um, <laughs> Tell them. Um, well, we're saying it's World War II. Um, it's kind of on the tail end of that. Um, it's in New York. It's a New York play. Um, Chester Bailey is a, uh, a Navy Yard worker during the war. Um, and he has kind of his parents didn't allow him to to go to war to fight and so he has some sort of resentments and then through a series of very catastrophic events he faces a lot of very tragic injuries and his life is forever changed um except he sort of he he has yet to come to terms with that change and so he is brought to a psychiatrist by the name of dr cotton that's me um who kind of who is tasked with presenting Chester with the circumstances that the rest of the world has already acknowledged, but Chester has yet That's to, good. That's yeah, good for has yet to uh, become wise to. Yeah. So yeah, it's a beautiful it's play. A really, really good one. Um, incredible writing. So uh, we hope you'll come. Here, let's see. Um, next question. Next question. The, the play, play explores the theme of facing a harsh reality versus embracing a comfort. There you fantasy. go. Have either of you ever indulged in a fantasy to feel better? Every single day. <laughs> I think I think to do what, you know, to be an actor, to be in the theater and any of this, you have to kind of live in that fantasy, at least for a bit. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe if yeah. you're a big superstar, it's become a reality. I don't know if it's so easy for them either. I think all of us, every one of us, I think, uh, you know, spends time imagining the future and imagining our dreams and our hopes and where we would like our, you know, you could call it creative visualization or, yeah. or whatever, but, but, uh, you know, by any other name, 
<laughs> probably a fantasy. <laughs> no, it's true. And I think a lot of, I think kind of, if you're looking at specific examples of something like that, I mean, you kind of have to, in the, in the world of auditioning and, and, and calling back, and especially nowadays where a lot of this is just like what we're doing right now over a computer screen, you kind of do have to live with this, yeah, I, I, I guess kind of imagined reality yeah, of just, why you're still doing it, why you want to kind of, you know, what's waiting for you at the other end of that job, that audition, those things. Yeah. You know, that's what that's what a lot of our, our, your career has. I would, I, as I say, yeah. I would venture that most people have a strong fantasy life, whether they acknowledge it or not. Yeah. Let's see. Do you give each other notes or do you leave that to the the director? How terrible would that be? I don't think we've ever if we... <laughs> said a thing to each other, honestly. Um, we it, don't even like to talk outside of the rehearsal room. I, don't... Really, no, I think when we were first driving down to Shepherdstown, I think we both were very nervous about what it was going to be like to work with each other and yeah. be around each other this intensely. And it was incredibly natural and easy. It, 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 any nerves about it went away very quickly. And, um, but I would never, I would never presume to give anybody a note, I don't think, but yeah. certainly not Ephraim. <laughs> you know, I, I think we, I think the biggest, the biggest discovery out of the whole process was learning what we're like in this, in this room, this rehearsal room together and kind of going from, cause I, I knew that, I, I knew that you were, a team player and and very much in love with the community and the process of of putting on a show but it's it's really thrilling to get to see your father do the thing that he's that he not only loves but is so masterful at there you go and also Ephraim's fantastic in the show it would never occur to me to tell him to do anything he knows exactly what he's doing we were driving down and, and he was nervous about, he plays a kid from Brooklyn. So he was a little oh, nervous yeah, about, little story about his uh, accent. accent. He said, I don't know what to do about my accent. And I said, well, let me hear a little bit of it. And he said a couple doing, of lines and I he sounded doing, like Tom Kennedy. JFK. Um, and, I was, and I thought, oh dear, uh, what are we going to do? And within. That um, might've been when you needed to give me a note, actually. <laughs> then within uh, two days of uh, the rehearsals, he had a perfect 40s Brooklyn accent. He sounds like one of the Bowery boys. And and I don't know how, because he says he's doing a friend of his, but I know this friend and he doesn't talk like that. It just he's just channeling this this incredible character. I know. I'm possessed. He's possessed. <laughs> <laughs> ah! What's next? What have you learned? Well, this is kind of what we were just saying, actually. What have you learned about each other from working together as actors that you didn't know before? Um, I don't know. Would you say like, we definitely have, we've definitely kind of learned to, to work with each other and, and not, I, I certainly, I won't speak for you, okay. but, um, I, I certainly feel as though I've learned much more about how you kind of approach something, you know, like it, it feels like sort of a master class uh, of, of the, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being a fanboy over here. Um, but, um, <laughs> but it does, no, I think it, I think it becomes you, you get to see you in a different light, I think. Yeah. It's well, like, you know, I'm at, I'm at work and I'm, yeah. you know, we're, we're problem solving and that's fun. Always problem solving. Um, I, you know, in a funny way, I don't think I really learned anything I didn't already know about Ephraim. I, he's incredibly disciplined and serious and fun in the room, but I already knew all of that. So it's just been a thrill to see him, you know, in a, in a professional situation and, and uh, handling himself so, so beautifully, but it's not, none of it has been a surprise, honestly. I think the fun thing, I think the, the discovery for me outside of just being in the room with you and, and kind of getting to do that is the fun of kind of seeing you with your peers and us, you know, like Ron Lagermarsino is a, is a, a very, very smart and lovely man who is our director, um, is um, when we go out and we, we kind of have a drink after, after rehearsal or have it after a show, um, it's really kind of fun to see, to, to be part of that, to see what it's like 
when you've had all this under your well, belt. Well, I, I, yeah. at one point Ephraim said, you know, you and Ron have all these great war stories. And I said, you know, you're going to have them too. Uh, just a matter of time. There's no way you can be in show business without getting a whole chest of war stories. So, <laughs> oh, That's good. Okay, here you Reed, go. Reed, uh, you and your wife, Constance Connie Shulman, are both busy actors. When did you discover that Ephraim wanted to follow in your footsteps? Well, we have a daughter as well. I know. She's, named Gus Bernie, she's Augusta. Working, she's working more than any of us. And she's an actor too. So um, uh, when did I realize that they both... They both uh, announced it around the same time. Ephraim was about 12, I think. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. And Gus would have been nine. And um, I don't know that there was a specific day, but uh, they they had done some plays at school and um, were terrific and funny and great. Um, and then I around that time, they both uh, started making some noise about it. People ask us all the time, did you discourage them? And I said, like, no, why would I, why in the world would I discourage them? People were, are always discouraging young actors and saying, you know, if you can do anything else, do it, <laughs> um, all that stuff. But, and it's so tiresome. Yeah. And um, if they're not meant for it, they'll figure it out on their own. You know, it's not my job to discourage them from doing anything. I know. And we've also been, I mean, I think I remember you saying at one point to me, and this was never you discouraging it, but it was you kind of, you've always been real about it with us, which is great because you've come in, you've seen, hey, you've seen me in the lows of my, oh, they've my seen career and Daddy the highs, sad yeah. a lot, yeah. you know, it just, so they, they didn't have, we weren't disillusioned. About yeah. What it was any going to misconceptions be. about what a life in show business is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's painful to now see them have their disappointments, but that's just the nature of the beast. And, um, uh, you know, you figure out a way to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, I, I don't know if there was a specific moment that I went out. Previously, I wanted to be a zookeeper. That was my, <laughs> that was my big, my big passion. Um, also a good job. A lot. Also, also a very good job. Um, but yeah, no, you, it was, you just become, it feels like it was always this sort of thing that was in our household just because it's what you guys did. And what, a, what an amazing kind of family business to be a part of, you know, <laughs> all show business all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Ephraim, what's your earliest memory of seeing theater with your family? Now I was trying to remember this myself when it came to earliest memories of seeing theater um, with you guys, um, I think I remember seeing The Music Man. What was that? Like 2000? 2000? With, with Craig Bierko and Rebecca yeah. Luker. Yeah. Um, mom with mom. Took mom yeah. took me to that. And I... I think we all went to see... Pajama, Kath, we saw Pajama oh, Game. Oh, Pajama Game with yeah. Harry, Harry Connick. Um and uh but we all went to see i think peter pan with kathy rigby maybe okay okay you were really little that might have been before gus was born yeah and um and then i remember we all went to see beauty and the beast remember that yes yes we i remember that. that um the thing the that what kind of cemented in my head is that um when it comes to seeing my family in theater um i would say kind of Probably member of the wedding with you in it. Um, Is that the first one? I think I, that's what I clock in my. Head. I did that in Westport. Yeah, uh, I think in two thousand six. So yeah, you would have been ten. Yeah, somewhere something like that. I was always in things that they couldn't see. I know. They were dirty. <laughs> um, so inappropriate. So that was a problem. I remember the thing. The the moment that I remember seeing you because I saw. We saw, I saw, saw Circle of Year. When was that? That was 2010. 2010. Um, so I was probably, what, 14? Yeah. Around then. Yeah. I, so I saw that, and I really... The thing that clicked in my head with me when it came to seeing you and just how good you were was when I saw you in Dream of the Burning Boy. Right, which was also 2010. Yes, that was your big. That was your big that year. That was a big year. I did three big plays that year, <laughs> 2010. So yeah. So that and then you came with your class to yes, see Dream yes. of the Burning. Yes, and that was very that was very emotional that for must me. Have been just intense. 
or you know, it's yeah. you losing your your high school age son, and I was your I was I was a high school age son at the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, yeah. Be each other's casting. Oh, this is what we were so scared of. Yes, be each other's casting directors. What role would you put each other in? You know, no. I, I you you have well, right? I don't know the the. The one that I've always wanted to be, and I, I'm probably still a little too young for it, but I think it would be, I think it would be very fun for us to be the Kellers in um, the what is it? Um, Miracle Worker? No, not, I'm not. <laughs> Captain Kellers. No, all my sons. Um, oh, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. All my sons. Arthur Miller. Right. I've all, I, I'm, uh, I've always loved um, all my sons. It's one of my favorite plays. Yeah. And I've always wanted to be Chris in it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That and would I, be that would be a great part for you. That would be very. That would be lots of fun. But I don't know. You've always wanted to. You could always be, you know, patriarch Tyrone. You've always. Uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. Would be, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I really can't. I mean, I'd like to just see, a Bailey. I'd like to see <laughs> from in any play. Honestly, you know, um, I, I like new plays. So yeah, it would be a play that that hasn't been written yet or that we don't know about yet. Um, but I think he can do anything. So I'd, I'd be, um, excited about anything. Yeah. So that's very sweet. That's very sweet. We'll see. Maybe, maybe I'll be the new phantom. <laughs> you better do it fast. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. After Chester Bailey, what shows are on your bucket list to do together? Okay. Kind of a similar situation yeah. for the two of us, huh? Um, well, I don't know. You're, you're, you're um you're a little tired of doing I'm, shows, I'm, huh? I'm planning on Chester Bailey being my last play. Uh, I think there's something really beautiful about this passing the torch to Ephraim and sending him off into the big world of show business. So um, plays beyond this, I don't really, I really haven't thought of. I, all my bucket lit, list roles were young men i never imagined myself getting older i seemed impossible and um i remember being in college and someone was talking about uncle vanya and i said well I, what's uncle vanya and i read it and i was like well there's nothing for me in this <laughs> and then of course i had uh, the incredible chance to play it with uh sam gold and annie baker so uh, i you know i never really imagined older parts yeah um i thought i wanted to play james tyrone but i i don't i really love new plays and i and I always would have preferred to do a new play rather than one that has a lot of fingerprints all over it. Yeah. But um, this is a beautiful way for me to end my stage career and for Ephraim to start his stage career. So, uh, so it's yeah. a very exciting, it's a hugely resonant on many, many levels for, for all of us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you thank everybody. you. Thank you for so much. Thank you so much for the folks at TDF and, and yes. And, Check out Chester Bailey on there. We're, I think we're on there, right? Yeah, I'm we're sure on we there. Are. And yeah. TDF has given me my whole theater going career. As long as I've been in New York for mm -hmm. 48 years, I've had the opportunity to see so many great plays I wouldn't have been able to afford to see without TDF and TKTS. So we're incredibly grateful to them every single day for generations of, of theater goers. Um, and no reason to think that they won't continue. I know. I'm plan. I hope you guys have long plans because I I'm <laughs> gonna need you guys. <laughs> but come see Chester Bailey and yes. the Irish Rep. Yes, it's a beautiful o play. October 12th preview start, and then um, October 19th we open. We are currently running through what, November 13th. You know, keep it get get buy, buy those tickets, and then you know we'll extend hopefully. Fingers crossed. Thanks everybody. <laughs> Thanks everybody.